So I'm on my way to my friend's comedy show that he promotes. You know, it's pretty cool. He's got a, a comic book store with a stage in the back of it. So he did his own version of um, Whose Line Is It Anyway? And uh, he has his own little comedy show he does once a month, I think, or twice a month, I forget which. But I go over to it. I support it. I support him. Uh... I figure I'll go out early and um, go to the Chinese restaurant across the street and you know that kind of thing. Well what happens is when you have in your mind what you expect things to be, usually it's like pissing against the wind. The whole night was like that. I went off, went, you know, going across the street there's a Chinese place. I went to go there. It was full of people. And it's one of those, we really want you to take out his four seats to sit in to eat. So I go down down about three stores down, and there's a pizza place, right? I go there. And they all saw me walk in, and they all looked at me. And when the old guy goes, be with you in a minute, and he's staring at receipts. So I waited like a few minutes, and I was like, all right, fuck this. Turned around and walked out. <laughs> two restaurants couldn't get in so just on the same property but a different plaza was a uh, some other restaurant that does a lot of seafood so I had a half a pound of tilapia with french fries and a shake and a drink so I had that go to my friend's uh, program it was a show he did one last month or so that I remember seeing, and uh, it was pretty funny. It was pretty cool. And um, you can write little questions and put in a fishbowl. His second half of the skit is he reads the questions. So fortunately for me, I did two questions, and I the question of course the questions are really you're supposed to fuck this guy up, right? So I asked him two questions that stumped him basically. It was quite amusing. So. Um, with that said and done, but there was a guy there that was a sound guy apparently, who uh, at times seemingly would upstage him, you know. And uh, it was no longer my buddy's show; it was my buddy's show and this guy's show. From the way this was kind of done, and I got the impression, even though it was advertised out for the public to come to, it was more like the same old support group or same old crowd if you're in a bar business they call it the 20 percent you know and I, I'm not part of that 20 percent you know I come in from time to time not often but enough and uh, you know in uh, initially I, I try to help out but I don't have the time to help them out with anything so I try to show my support in other ways but I was, in, as much as I enjoyed the show, I was equally disappointed because, uh, you know, I would rather watch my friend do stand-up, not my friend do stand-up and have some of the sound effects kind of direct the show, that kind of thing. But it's their bubble. It's what they want. But again, in your mind, when you're projecting what you're seeking out to be, like with my Chinese restaurant and the show tonight, you know, it's kind of hard to send out love when you... You know, didn't care for an aspect of the whole thing, you know. So, anyways, it was, I mean, he was funny. Sound guy wasn't. You know, I think someone needs to get into a car wreck and get out of the picture type of thing for a little while so they can be back on track as to what they're really about, who they are. You know, otherwise, change the marquee. So, but anyways, but this wasn't my world, this wasn't my manifestation, this wasn't my, you know, anything. And, and sometimes you have to have a reality check with yourself, realizing, you know, if you're stepping out of your bubble into another world or another world's bubble, you're not going to have the control of your own atmosphere there because you're in another world, if you would. So you just have to kind of roll with the punches. So I did. But, um, you know, I, I think what's going to happen is it's going to be more of a 
instead of a hi how are you person's name I think it's gonna be more of a wave in the crowd the way things are going you know because why would I want to go to a place I don't want to go to anymore you know that kind of deal you know especially how you know if you're paying money into it long story short the last fifteen dollar program I spent at a particular place had a person write a resume of their feats of success of a season of local uh, play company and you know voice coach and all that and it was the most most out of tune person out of the whole group one of those situations so at that point you realize oh one of those people too now Am I being overly critical? I spent 12 years as an IOTC stagehand, or a call list stagehand, and also a local stagehand, and I work for professional people. And if you're going to spend money, especially if it's $15 for a show, I don't know what would be more awkward. Stomaching someone who's off key thinking they're doing great, or contemplating asking for your money back at the end of the show. But uh, that's why I decided not to do those shows anymore and go for my buddy's stand-up. But a comment was made about negativity. You know, there is a person that's... If you're a Hanna-Barbera fan, he'll be known as Glum. You're never going to make it. But this gentleman was very negative in that respect, just like Glum. Never going to do good. Never. But I do believe there's a balance give you a, a good example of balance this person who had this big high opinion of himself who failed at every aspect of what he was putting down on paper only felt as though he achieved by a modest standard locally I would implore that person to go and try to do it professionally make money off of it I think the humbling experience of rejection would adjust him at an even keel. But that's just how I see it. I might be ranting. But this is my end of the night. I haven't done a video in a few days. But I just want to, you know, catch up on a few topics. Like when you leave your element, don't expect things to go your way or your projection. Secondly, when you have um, a person who boasts a lot, a lot what they've done and haven't really done anything or better yet has done the opposite you know, good example I got out of welding class I've gone through about 15 interviews I've turned down about half of the offers I got because I want to make sure I get the right place I want to go to how I turn them down is simply telling each one that they're my first interview I will get back with them next week or two because every employer who offered me the job wanted me to work that day so that's just my ploy to extend it out a little bit and it has to be because an employer wants someone who's going to be there for them yeah well I'm there for me but you have to be a team player and all that you know but when I applied for a particular job, the working atmosphere wasn't so bad. It was about 10, 15,000 feet of air conditioned warehouse space, and your welding, principally easy welds. I mean, principally as in, you, hear, you know the, what the weld you're supposed to be welding. I just left welding school. I know how to weld, right? The welds that they wanted. Thing called a fuse welding, where you create an arc on your t TIG and you join two, you melt two pieces of metal together and you create a seam. The thickness of the seam was half of a sewing pin. This to give you an example. Uh, if you really want to know how thin that is, you get a mechanical pencil. And you take the lead out, and, the, and kind of divide that lead. I don't know if you can see it, 
but you know what a mechanical pencil lid is, right? Well, about that size, if not half that. I couldn't touch it. It's a thing called a bead. You melt the metal, two pieces of metal together, you know, together, and you get a puddle, and you add filler wire, so you get this little bead. Size of the head of the same pin. Needless to say, the answer was no. And the guys were nice enough to tell me, nice try. And they even told me how to do it. Because I told them, I'm, I'm not going to get the job. I know this, but tell me what I did wrong and help me out. And they did. Very cool. And they're very good, cool guys and a cool company. They even opened the door for me to come by any time to, you know, practice a few beads and try, try again. Not too many employers or future employers would do that for you. But... You know, when you man up to your limitations, the doors kind of open up to you if you're with the right people. You know, that's my example. So, this sound person that was intervening my friend's comedy show in the, in the guise of humor, I think I would like to see him apply himself in the real paying world of his talent or what he thinks is he has talent just to see where he measures up to my friend has a funny company he has a person who has all of the, all of the time in the world to help him with very little talent I have 12 years experience in the technical field and no time to help kind of funny no it's not jealousy it's observation. I mean, I love to help my buddy out. Anytime I have a friend or someone I like, I like to help him out as much as I can. But when people don't, now he'll appreciate my help. But when you get people out there who act like a bureaucracy, or I'm talking more than one person, or two persons, in this case, I wouldn't talk more than three people in that organization of his, which is the owners. If I have to talk to anyone else but the owners, I don't need to be talking to them because at that point you know I'm not dealing with the people that are important to me so that's just how I see it so it's a little rant a little thing a, a bunch of observations from the last few months and that's fine but I figured you know what I got too much time on my hands even think about this because I obviously need to be doing more to get myself situated in my welding field which I'm getting pretty close to so anyways this is a general topic about people surrounding bubbles people who mislead themselves into thinking they are stupendous when in actuality they might not even measure up at all so you know, there you have it. And I have to say, even with my own example, I practiced those weld beads for this particular test with that micro weld I was telling you about. And I had a teacher telling me, a boy, that's great, that's good. So when I did not make it, and my gracious hosts who evaluated me actually did the beads in front of me and did the seam weld, let me bring the pieces that I failed at and the ones they worked on and I gave it to my teacher and I said this is what they wanted and it was a general consensus that a person who could weld like that would have at least three to five years experience welding in that type of industry with those type of welds to get it that right to give you an idea that's measuring up. So sometimes even people encourage you saying you're doing okay may not even make the standard or encourage you or have encouraged you to not make the standard not knowing the standard themselves. See, so you have to get out of that little bubble. See, and, and try it out. Now for me, may I take everything to heart? Not one bit. In fact, my attitude was to go off and apply to many different jobs as possible 
to see what's out there and to see where I stand, where I measure, who wants me, why, and, uh, and see if it's no work environment for me. Truth be told, I found a couple of places so far. And yes, I've measured up. In fact, I almost downplayed one, which is not, I wouldn't recommend it. So, but uh, yeah, I, I found a place I think I'll be working for, as a side note. But when it comes to measuring up, it's about application. It's about putting shit in the real world. Not with a bunch of people patting your back saying, there you go. And you're really not having the talent to do it. Catch you later.